All right, we're in the uh, 2021 Summer Major. We're on the opening round on the back side, playing the back nine. So I went back and watched the front because there was a few holes. I salvaged out, I picked up, I got a hole in one on one of the holes, but I hit a lot of perfects and didn't, uh, but there were some of the holes that I struggled on like out on the course and I was trying to figure out what the hell was going on. So I went back and watched and here's what I found out. My... <laughs> When they made the last change and they moved the uh, they moved the take shot and they moved it down, and so my grid line, my center grid line, so if you're doing max curl so that you can follow it so you don't short shoot a shot, was about five percent too high. And so the ball was actually down here. So when I followed the the center line, I was actually short shooting the shot on a max, and that was causing me some issues. So I lowered it down, lowered my 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 grid line down. I added, I stretched it out a little bit because the way that it's showing now, you can actually, when you're doing max curl, you're way out on the edge. So my grid line used to end here, so I stretched it out a little bit and I put some uh, pink to let me know I'm on the end. And then because I lowered it down, it's pretty close to the take shot now, so I added a new horizontal line and we'll see if I like that. Um, I may adjust this line up or down so that I can adjust wind off of that line instead of doing the take shot. So we'll see how it goes. And that's where we're at. So I shot a minus 13 on that front. I really, in my opinion, haven't I haven't looked at the people at the top. If you watch my stuff on a regular basis, I usually don't look at the people at the top of the brackets because I don't want to base. I have a plan and I want to stick to that plan. And I don't want to be taking extraordinary risks to try and do something because I, and you can get demoralized sometimes. You come in and somebody's shot a fantastic score and you look at it at the beginning and you're demoralized the whole round. You feel like you've got to take a risk on every shot and then you can end up making mistakes. I don't normally look at the top, but I think that it's going to take to get into the top 10 in the weekend round. Um, and to be up there towards the top, I think in most of these brackets, I mean, at a minimum, you're going to have to shoot a 28. And I think to give yourself any shot at a win, um, we have to have that conversation of it's got to be a 30 or better. I mean, at least a 30. I mean, I think if you shoot a 30, you're, you're depending on your bracket. And, it's, and it always depends on your bracket. Because I've been in brackets where you could win with a 28 and had teammates that were in brackets and they shot a 30 and they came in sixth. And so it just really depends on your bracket. But I think if you shoot a 30, then you're in that conversation of banner or possibly getting a win. Tw anything better than a 28, you're, you're putting yourself in position. So in order to come in with good tiebreakers, um, I'm going to have to shoot a 15 on the back. And, and the whole deal is, is that we should be looking to try and get a 15 because every stinking hole on this course is, is doable. I mean, you got a great shot on every hole. So let's let's go check them out. Hold on a second. I'll pull it up. Hold on. All right, here we go. So hole number one. Hole number one. And the goal here is to get as far up into this area. Now, what's funny is I've been up in the area twice, and I've missed it both times with my rapier. And I'm going to make it today. I'm going to make it on this round and get an eagle on this first hole. I'm, I'm done dicking around with it. So... What I did find is that you can overshoot this, so let's let's not do that. Let's not do it. Let's see which way the wind's blowing today, in this on this side. So we're getting a slight bit of unfavorable wind, a little bit of headwind. I'd really like to shoot this with the power with my big with my big topper because I think I can get. I may be able to get over there with my extra mile. I'm, I think I've been using an extra mile on but I think you can use a big topper and do the same thing. So let's pick a bag. Let's pick some bags. Let's make sure we got what I'm looking for. And there was one of these holes that I want to bring a hornet on because I, f I either need to get a little bit farther out there. I was kind of in between clubs. And that was no bueno. But if I would have had a hornet, it shoots just a little bit farther than that kingfisher. And that little bit of extra distance, I would have been able to take it with a hornet as opposed to uh, trying to do the backspin. So I'm going to start with the extra mile and we may switch to the big topper. I'm going to take a kingmaker. And we'll see how that does. And if I don't like that, I can switch to a power four ball. And if I switch to a power four ball, I'm going to try and get rid of some of these 
I may try and get rid of the prestige ball. I think that's my only other. I could use that, that season 23. Maybe I'll use a season 23 just to cut the wind down a little bit if I if I decide I'm gonna use a power four ball. I'm gonna start off with a kingmaker. Here we go. Here we go. Getting out on the back nine. Let's roll. Got to get a 15, and I got to start it off right here by getting this eagle. We need to pick up three per side, breaking it up into three whole sets. You got a par four, par three, par five, those three whole sets. We want to come out of each set picking up something. I think all three of the par fours are definitely makeable. The last par four is, is depending on where you put yourself, is probably the hardest And the deal is, with a, with a big topper, you might be able to come from this side and bounce over and not have to do the max overpower. And I don't think I have to use all the top spin. I want to come out into that and do just a little bit less top spin. 3-7. I'm going to do two rings, just make a titch into power, and then I'm going to put a little bit of curl to get me away from that sand. And I hit it 700 rings great to the left, which means I'll clip the rough right there. <laughs> so making it hard, just like right off the bat, just making it hard on myself. So this should be a short iron. I think I did this in the practice round, and I clipped that rough. And I will be in short iron range. I'm using a Kingfisher on this. And the Kingfisher hits. If I got some notes here. Since I'm doing hand numbers instead of using the, the app. It's because I'm old school. I got no problem with the apps. I'm just okay using the using hand math. King Fisher. One, two, one. I'm gonna play it. I'm playing, I got my own math on this, so there's Max. So I'm pretty close to Max Club. Where's man? There's man. There's about mid, so I'm eking towards Max. It's at 1.1 per ring. A couple backspin. Let's put me right on that side. So 2.1 divided by 1.1 is 1.9 rings. Let's try and get lined up with the wind here. There's one, nine. Let's see if we can hit it perfect. Hitting it perfect, get in a hole. It looks like the graphic. Woo! That's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> and hold. That works. That works for me. Starting it off with an eagle. I was playing, you know, I played, I've been playing this game since the game came out. The game came out in like February, March 2017, and I started playing it in May of 2017. And you know, I, as soon as I got my Hornet, I really, I when I first started, I I didn't really get the the Hornet. I played a lot with a Thorn, and was watching a video with, by J Zachary Jones. He doesn't shoot videos anymore, but anybody that's played for a long time knows who Zachary is. And really kind of convinced me to start using my Hornet, and I, I love the Hornet. And I played with it forever. And the numbers where it gets, when it gets its max accuracy, it's at like 96. I had a lot of success at that. And I played it at 1.1, 1.9, 2.2. .2. So I was at mid-club 1.9, and I was killing it. Like, if I got into my short iron range, especially if I got into mid or minimum short iron, I was killing it. And I, when you have a club like that, you're always thinking, hey, man, if I could get this to max 
you know, where it was like 100% accuracy, then it's just be that much better. But when I, when I got it upgraded to level nine and I got that 100% accuracy, it, it, it went away. Hold on a second. All right, I'm back. Customer. Got to take customer calls. There we go. I was talking about the Hornet. Yep, switch to my Kingfisher because it has the same numbers as my Hornet used to have. I think that's what I was talking about. That was like five years ago. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to do that. There is one thing I can do, though. I can do my uh, club card trading. Let's do the club card trading. Let's see what we got today. Let's see if I get a club I'm actually looking for today. Come on. Come on. The worst hammer is... And I hardly ever get the Thor's hammer. Hardly ever. I'm not sure why I'm dumping points. I would like to get it up to level six, but uh, that's it. All right, hole number two. Now, I'm, I'm thinking on hole number two, whew, you know, the first couple of times I shot this hole, I think this is one of those holes where if you're coming through the fairway, you're coming just straight at it. It's one of those holes that if you hit it, it, it's almost the reverse where like if you hit to the right, normally you'll end up to the right. And if you hit to the left, you'll end up to the left. But I think that going through this area right here, you can get off. And I've, I've been super close going through the middle. I've got one of my viewers talk to me about, and I thought originally that he had done the rough bump from over here but he actually was doing the rough bump from this area right here and one of the things about this is is that it was barely into the rough and so if you hit anything great to the right you are in big 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 trouble you're definitely going to end up off in the back and i i really just do not i i would like to go for it on this but my ability to hit perfect is not what it used to be and I'm not sure that I can do that. Maybe. I'm going to come there for the shot going straight through, but I'm going to explore that. I'm going to at least look at it. Let's see which way the wind's blowing. Yeah, we're not getting bad. We're getting pretty much neutral wind. And the wind is blowing you off so that if you're trying to do that rough bump and you don't make a great wind adjustment, even if you hit it perfect, you could be in trouble. So I think I'm going to think with that win, I'm just going to play. I'm going to play it safe because I, I, there's so many holes to pick stuff up that I don't want to have an epic fail on par three. And I'm just going to play it safe. Now, I was bringing out a power three ball so that I could get into my Max Grizzly. And I could help myself out there and cut the wind down, but I think that'll be fine. Let's think about this here. Let me get my trusty dusty calculator out. All right, I'm ready. Let's go see if we can get a hole in one. And just play it. I'm pretty sure this is, the way that it looks is it's uphill. So I should actually play, I should be taking some wind off. Like, let's keep an eye out when they scroll down into the thing. It, it really appears to be uphill where you should be taking some off. Pretty nonchalant wind adjustment. Hit it two rings, great to the left. And a little short. And we have a 3.5 wind equals. So I've got 3.15 rings. Let's see if I can get lined up with it. 
There's three. One, five. Well, let's hit a perfect and get it in the hole. And I hit it, and I hit it. At least one ring, possibly two rings, great to the left. And look at it, it came into the right. So I'm saying it almost, it almost seems like if it's one of those holes that if you hit it great to the left, it goes to the right. If you hit it great to the right, it goes to the left. If you hit it perfect, you're in this, you're in the, the, the zone. With no tomato soup. No tomato soup. The bird has stopped. <laughs> Can you just take take tomato sauce, and warm it up? <laughs> I'm getting. I'm getting a dirty look. <laughs> In the hole. Party. All right. That was hole number two. All right. Hole number three. Let's check out hole number three. Well, first, let's see which way the wind's blowing. We're getting favorable wind. Definitely favorable wind. Let's see if we can get a little bit. Uh... So we're trying to get our first bounce out in this area and bleed forward. I should be able to use a power three ball. Let's cut the wind down. I'm just gonna go straight at it. Let's get back in there. Let's see what balls that I have. Let's see if I have any more of those. Uh, so if I can get through this round, I'll use a kingmaker. I'm gonna need some. I'm gonna have to buy something here pretty soon so I can get some gems. Arr! I'd really like to take this bag right here. I'm not sure I can get far enough out in that area. We'll see. I'll start off with, I, I think I'm going to have to use my extra mile. Extra, extra. Here we go. Let's play it. Let's just go out and play it and see what happens. Let's see if I can get my drive shot to actually go out there and not hit it. 70 rings great to the left. Or the right. Here we go. Neo goes first. So my understanding is, is they're making some more Matrix movies. My nephew had never seen the Matrix movies until here just about a year ago. Not realizing that, you know, there's a lot of the special effects that are in the Matrix movies that you see now, and it's like, you know, it's commonplace. But when the Matrix came out, especially like the Cars commercial where all the cars come out and they pick and choose, and that type of tech, that was never a, around until the Matrix came out. So when it came out, it was, it was big. There was a lot of those visual effects that we had never seen before. My theory is is that the people who make the matrix, the machines, I'm gonna come over to the right just a little to give myself a little more room on the second bounce so I can put a little teeny bit of curl on it. Hitting it perfect. So my theory is, is that the machines recognize, like we're all AA batteries, but the machines recognize that there are some people who are D batteries. They're the ones that want to go to Zion and want to get out of the matrix. So they've created a subroutine for those people. And what was really happening was, is that Neo was still in the matrix and that that's all just the subroutine of the matrix. And so we, we, he never got out, he never freed Zion. That stuff didn't happen. It's just another part of the illusion. So we'll see when the new ones come out, like what the deal is on them. And I've been having some, this, this wind, 
with this rough bump. I've been doing full adjustments and that little rough area right there has, like I've been super close, like I've been over pulling it. I've been super close to the sand. That rough bump is, is freaking me out. And I like the wind when it's blowing to the left or the right because you, you know, if you make a bad adjustment, you're still in the rough. Or if you hit it great to the left or the right, you're still in the rough. But the way that the wind's blowing right here, that, that is so thin in that area. And I am right at, I'm in between clubs. I don't know if I have enough backspin to get me up there. I do. I'm going to go right at it. So I'm at minimum club, minimum grizzly. It's 1.4, so it's about two rings. Two and a sliver. Isn't it perfect? Oh, just slightly under pulled it. Arr. Let me make a note here. I should have pulled that 10, and I didn't mind that shot. That wasn't too bad. I'm going to put a plus 10 on that circlet. I like the rough bump there, like I said, when the wind's blowing to the left or the right, but that... Uh, that rough is so narrow, and I really have, I just barely, you put so much topspin on it from that spot that I hit the sand yesterday, and it bounced out of the sand, hit the rough, and then just barely got into the fairway, and was able to recover, but it was close to an epic fail. Close, close. It looked like it might have been the right way for just a second. All right, we got to pick this next par four up. Hole number 13. Let's check it out. Let's see which way the wind's blowing. So once again, we got a neutral wind. This wind's a little helping us. So this is the hole right here. And I found out my grid line was off. Because yesterday, I came in with my APOC. It was in this spot right here. Our wind's going in this direction. We have plenty of room on the red line, so I should be able to bring... I'm going to bring a, a Kingmaker so I can get the side extra side spin. And since our ball guide's going off in this direction, trying to make up this gap to try and get through here, this, this is too much of a swing. I think even with a three side spin ball. So I'm only gonna put like two and a half, maybe three tops in. I'm gonna put just enough top spin on so that I can stretch my ball guide out so that when I swing it around, it clips the fairway. And I'm trying to stick it right here so that I've got a nice short shot to get in. But yesterday what happened was I clipped the rough right here and I actually short shot it because I was shooting up into this range and short shot it and I was like, what the hell's the deal? It's I made it was a 2.9 wind made or right over three and and it's 1.5 per ring. It's not like it's a big deal. I hit a perfect max curl and and short shot it. So that was the deal I, when I went back and looked at it. So let's take an APOC. Apocalypse. That bag right there, and we're going to take a kingmaker. And off we roll. The main goal is to get to the thing, and I need to figure this shot out so that I can um, write down how much topspin. I've got on my notes three, but it seemed like yesterday, like three might have been just a little bit too much. I used the five and had rolled out into the sand. On that particular shot, I was able to get it up and down from there, but I'd rather be in the fairway. This is about the same way we were getting on the front. What is that ball? It's a power five ball. That is. Now, you, I'm not sure if you can get over to the other side with a power five ball. I don't think you can. I think you could probably come over here and do a rough bump with a power five ball and then it, you're 
pretty much guaranteeing yourself that you're going to be on that side. You don't have to negotiate with the water. And you don't need a power five ball to get over to that side over there. You can get over to that side over there pretty easily with a, probably with a katana. And ending up in the rough of the power five. Come on. Come on. Oh, they did switch it to a katana. All right. I feel better about that. At least they didn't waste the power five ball. I want to be two rings of separation down in this hole. Two and a half top spin. Eh, I better give myself a little teeny bit more. Maybe two and three quarters. And we're still at two and a half. 1.9. I'm going to move it a ring and a half. I'm going to give myself plenty of room here. Max curl. Hit it one ring great to the right. Whoa, down. So two and a half, maybe two came in there pretty good. This is where I ended up when I was, when I did the max top spin, the same exact area. And this area is about, if I'm in the rough, it's about 16 per ring with my Nirvana. Not sure if my opponent checked their red line to see where they're at. Let's see how much they move it. They moved it two and a half rings. That looks like it's got to be maybe half half clubs, so that'd be like four miles per hour per ring. So let's. I hope they hit it perfect so we can see where it goes because it looks like that was a big pull, and they're almost in the hole, just a little short. And that looked like a big pull, but they might have been farther away. I don't know if they checked where their red line was. I'll check mine just to make sure. There's max, there's mid. I'm in that quarter range. And that should be about a ring. Let's get lined up with the wind. One ring. Oh, let's hit it perfect. Hitting it perfect. Get in the hole. Woo! That's what I'm talking about right there. And it was. And I over pulled the hell out of that. It was in quarter range. I moved at one ring. What was I thinking? I don't even know what I was thinking there. I moved that. I, I adjusted that a whole ring, which in that range, that I'm going to have to go back and see what I did there because I was in like quarter club. It should be 16 per ring. So it should have been like a quarter, quarter adjustment. And I moved it a whole ring. I have no idea what happened there. And I play, I've played a lot with my Nirvana and have no idea how that worked. But I will take the result. That's what I'm talking about. Can't be good, be lucky. And I've always thought that, you know, the par fours is where I've always been, like that's where we make our money. And having some success on the par fours is big. All right, this par three right here, it's one top spin playing one per ring and I've been like right on on this hole and it seemed like the last time I played it I was off hold on one second I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back and look at this hole real quick hold on hold on all right I went back and watched I, I got a hole in one on this hole yesterday and I played it straight up and I almost slightly over pulled it but I'm going to do a straight up wind adjustment minus one I think yesterday the wind was blowing 
the opposite direction of what it's blowing today. So I'm going to play a sniper and a quasar. Sniper. Quasar. Which is a power one ball. Let's see here. I think that's a power two. I think one of these is a power one ball. And I really don't want to use the top spin boost. And I don't need the side spin. That's, man, that's a big waste of a ball. To try and hit it like that. I think that's the only, maybe this is a power one, three side spin, and I only have one of them. I'm just going to play it with a quasar. So we'll just play it straight up with a quasar and see what the deal is. See if we can get another hole in one on it. See if I can hit it perfect. Straight up one top spin, one per ring. Here we roll. I'm going to take off one. So I'm going to play it. If I have a 2 3 win, I'm going to play a 2 2 win. I don't know how much I'd have to pay Playdemic to quit flashing me the stuff on there for the Facebook. I need to log out of Facebook and just log in with my uh, phone or my email address so I can get that them to quit flashing that every time somebody logs on. On the green. All right, let's get on the green but in the hole. So plenty of room. One top spin. No, not, not more than one, just one. If I can get it to go right at the freaking hole. So I'm going to play 2.5. There's 2.5. Now we just need to hit it perfect. Hitting it perfect. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Woo! That's what I'm talking about right there. Picking up the hole in one. Yes, sir. I'm going to put on here one top spin, minus one to cup. I was still a little, uh, I, where I slightly over pulled it there. I tried playing, because I, I think I'm more in like mid club, which would be 1.1. So let me do that math. So it was like 2.6 and I played 2.5, so it would be 2.6 divided by 1.1. It would have been a 2.3, 2.4 pull and I did a 2.5. So maybe I should be playing that at mid club. When I played the straight up mid club, I was I hit a couple of perfect there and I was off. And when I went to the one per ring, it seemed like I was getting closer, but it's almost like it's an in-between. I'm gonna play the minus two to the cup. Which is basically putting me back at the 1.1. So I'm basically playing it at mid club. <laughs> That the roundabout the the roundabout way playing that there so all right all right we still got a lot of holes to play and we still have opportunities we have four great opportunities to pick up some shots here so let's go look at hole number fifteen this par five all these par fives are alviable all right. I was in a good spot yesterday. I came out here and really got some good distance out here. I used the power four ball because of the way that the wind was blowing. Let's see which way the wind's blowing today. So we're getting headwind today. So I'm going to play a power four ball again. And I think I'm going to play the Kingmaker X. Because that'll give me some, that'll cut the wind down, give me power four, 
give me some good options at it. So let's go pick the ball here. I saw one of these balls here earlier as a power. This is basically, this is cutting the wind down even more. So I can use, I could use an acer ball. I have just enough to finish out this tournament. It's 4-3-4. Four, four. The side spin. I'm going to use the acer. And let's cut that wind down. I'm going to write this on my notes. So I'm going to use an acer. We'll select that. And I'm going to bring my extra mile so that I can get that uh, little bit extra on the other side. I may be able to bring out my big topper. So we'll have to see. Let me start with the big topper and I can always switch if I don't like the look. Let me open up a chest. Clear out a slot. Anytime you can never want to play without an empty slot if you're uh, really trying to work on your clubs. We're all trying to work on our clubs. If you play up in the higher tours, you're going to get your clubs. You're going to, especially once you get to tour nine, tour 10, you're going to get your clubs up there really quick. And you're going to be getting club cards that you're looking for. You're going to get a lot of Apox and you're going to get a lot of Thor's hammers. You're going to be able to move those clubs along pretty quickly. got a little lucky on this hole yesterday because I where I was at I had to move it over to the right and the deal is is you don't want to end up out here you want to end up over here so the farther you move it to the right the more you're involving this rough out here and I was almost to the point where I could overshoot it and I hit it to the left and I'm surprised that I missed that fairway You better get out of that rough. No, you're in big, big trouble. You better hope I make an Albie. I'm going to go in that direction right there and put just a little teeny bit of curl on it. Hit it two rings great, one and a half rings great to the right. And there I should be fine, but I might clip the rough. Ooh, just barely made it. Now, if you clip the rough and you bleed out from there, you can you still have a shot, but picking up that extra distance. Okay, I'm doing straight to the cup, plus two, maybe. See if my opponent goes from the rough to the rough. Nope, they ended up in the fairway. Excellent. It's so common in this game, you go from the rough to the rough or from the sand to the sand. Okay, I'm going to give myself a little bit of room from the red line so that I can uh, adjust out the wind. Make sure I'm going right at the hole. And do a 3-3 three, three adjustment. There's three, two and a half. Three, three. Maybe hit it perfect. Hitting it perfect. Get in the hole! Just a bit.
bit outside. That was a slight over pull against that wind. It seemed like the way that the wind, I'll have to go look at that. Did I come in on the right hand side? If it was on the right hand side, it was an under pull. It was on the left hand side, it was an over pull. And I can't remember it because it changed direction there and I was, I was hoping that it was giving me the roll up to the cup and fall in. But it didn't. Into hold. Eagle, that is not the Albie we're looking for. What's funny is, is that, and this has happened to me a lot on when brand new holes come out. I go out there the very first time I play them and I'm like on fire. And then I go out there after that and it's like, then you have to struggle to get it. The first, first time I played these par fives, I albied all of them. <laughs> and haven't got an albie since. All right, hole number 16. Let's see which way the wind's blowing. Oh, we got, uh, this is... All right, hole number 16, this par four. And I'm still in this wind. Oh. I think the way I'm going to play this hole, I've been undecided on how I want to play it. So we're getting, we're getting a headwind. It's blowing straight across the course. So it is possible to get over here, but yeah, I, I think that's got to be the right circumstances. You gotta have the right wind, and it's all about. And you've got to know what the wind adjustment is on, with the drive, because you got to get one bounce here, one bounce to hit here. This bounce being more important than anything, because if you mess this bounce up and you clip the rough, you're just gonna bleed out and you're okay. But if you don't get this bounce right, you could easily end up in the drink. If you get this bounce to hit, more than likely you'll get over if you put enough topspin to stretch your bounces out. So, you know, you put enough topspin so that when it makes that second bounce, it can clear that. Because each successive bounce, this distance is shorter. So trying to stretch your topspin out, you've got to make sure that you can clip this second bounce in that fairway. It, you, it is possible to get over there and you've got a seriously good chance of making an, an eagle. But you have a really good chance of making an eagle from right here. Now, the other way you can do it is come out here and shoot it straight up, but you're relegated to a wood out here. And here you're relegated to long iron, short iron, depending on where you get. And yesterday what happened was I, I hit with this. This is the hole where I got out here far enough that with my Kingfisher, I was actually in between clubs and I had to shoot it with my Grizzly. And if I would have had a Hornet, I would have been in Max Hornet. So I'm gonna switch this bag up to a Hornet And I think I can get this done, still get it done against that wind with a power three ball. But just in case, if I have to bring out a power four, I'm gonna play it with one of the Kingmaker X's. It'll help cut the wind down a little bit and give me that extra little oomph. I don't necessarily need the side spin, but it will help cut the wind down just a little and give me the extra distance. But I'm gonna start off with a Kingmaker. And that'll help. And I want to make sure I take this bag so I've got my Hornet in there instead of my Kingfisher just so that I can try and, if I am in that same spot where I'm in between clubs, that Hornet will get me that extra distance. Now the problem there is, you really want to, I really want to make sure I get as much distance as I can because we're having to pull up against a headwind. Let me open up one of these. Could have saved a gem on that one, but we'll, we're going to win this hole, so I'll, I'll open it next time. And I may want to think strongly about bringing a power four ball just right out of the gate. I'm going to just bring a power four ball right out of the gate. I'm going to make a note here, King X. 
I've got power four ball on there, but I didn't mark down which power four I was going to use. So making sure that you have enough that you can play the rest of the round if you're going to use that ball. And I think you only really need to use it if you're getting headwind, if you're getting any kind of tailwind or sidewind, you, you can just do it with a normal power three. With this wind right here, with that being at that low, you can probably hit it with just a regular power three. I think with the power four, if I can get out there far enough, I can get myself into my Hornet range as opposed to playing it with long iron. Because I think it's wood out here and it's long iron over here. Now if you bring out a big enough ball, you can start on the other side and you can put on a little bit of backspin. What I would have done is I would have started in the hollow on the other side of the sand, on the tee box side of the sand, and then used my topspin to bring it up because you're losing this distance right here up to the sand trap. And I think even with a power four, that's too much. That's too much. Even with that wind. Right, I'm going to pull the wind out. 2.5, just take the side wind out. It's 2.1 per ring, so I'll take a little out. Put a little curl on it. Hit it one ring great to the right. Let's see if that's enough to still get me out of the rough. Cut as much distance as I can to the cup. Really trying to get into my short iron range. I think I'll have to see where I'm at here. I think I got really good distance there. My Hornet's hitting 1.0 per ring with a three power ball. Now this would have been, well, with a, with a power zero ball, you may have to bring out a big dog. But just, I think from over on that side right there, you could bring out a sniper with maybe just a little bit bigger ball, maybe a power one, power two. Ooh. That's one of the things about using a big dog is there's, it, it's got a lot of tools, but it, uh, oh, so I am on my grizzly. And I must've hit it way in the hill up there yesterday if I was, and I had a power four ball, so I'm at that MIG club. MIG Grizzlies, 1.1 per ring. Max backspin. And I'm gonna get right up on the hole with this wind. 1.1, there's three, three. That leaves me two. So there's three, three. Oh, that was a little too much. Let's hit it perfect. Oh, one ring great to the right. Arr! And a little short. I moved it right over the hole so that there was actually one bounce showing after. And instead of like the very end of the ball guide, I put the one bounce before in the cup, knowing I was going against a little bit of headwind. And when you put backspin on it like that, each, you know, the backspin doesn't take effect until you hit the ground the very first time and you're going up against the headwind. So the very first time it hits the ground, that it starts its backspin where it's it's shortening up the, the distance between each successive bounce and you've got a headwind and it really lays the ball down. That is no bueno. All right. Now this of the par fours is the one that I'm still, I, I don't like, I, I think with the power four ball where I was at there yesterday, I'm going to have to go back and watch that video. I was waiting. I must have got farther up in that hole. 
because I took this with my short iron and I kind of like taking it with my short iron and not with my long iron. And I don't really like having to put on that much backspin on a hole like this. I usually like to just put on just a little bit of backspin and roll it out. All right, all right. Hole number 17, let's see which way the wind's blowing. We got favorable wind. We've got a nice little rough bump on this hole. Hold on one second. I want to go see what happened on this hole. Hold on. All right, I went and watched what happened to me yesterday on the front just to make sure I had it straight. So I came in. Let's go look at this hole. I came in and I hit it. I hit it perfect and ended up under pulling it. So I'm going to do a plus 10% at mid club. So it's 1.2 plus 10 and I did I have noticed here I've hit it coming up to the cup several times and was just a little short and I had my ball guide here's the flagpole and I had my ball guide running right up to it and terminating there and it ended up a little short so I came the next time I came and I put my ball guide right on the back side and I ended up a little short so this time I went about a square and a half past, and I actually went a little bit too far. I think, like, if I would have been on track, it may have bounced over the hole or bounced off the flagpole. So I'm going to go, like, a grid past the cup. And I'm using a katana. And that katana puts me right dead center mid-club. Do-do-do. Katana. Oh. Sniper. Let's open up a chest. Open up a chest. Winning a few. Putting some club cards back in the deal. I was adding up my rares the other day and I've got, like if I didn't add any more club cards into the deal, I've got over a year's worth of club cards just in rares. And I still have... I still have some left in in my commons. I have a few of my epics, especially the lower level epics, tours one, two, and three. I've got some of those epics up to level seven. And some of them, it's world changing when they get to level seven. That big topper, when it gets to level seven, if you're working on your big topper, it is definitely like I got a lot of in tournament chess I've won a lot of big toppers it's it's a club I get all the time in tournament chess and I'm never disappointed when I get big toppers that club is uh, really good and when it does get maxed out and I'm not putting any points into it because it's way away it's like 350 cards away from being maxed out so it's not worth uh, it's not worth putting my club cards in eventually what will happen is, is I'm gonna run out of every card except for my razor and then I will have to max out my razor and then I'll just have to pick clubs every day. But right now I'm at least being able to only put club, use my club cards for clubs that I really, really want to upgrade. Slightly through the hole, so it's 1.2. It's, it's uh, 2.5 times 1.1 equals divided by 1.2. It's 2.3 rings. Or excuse me, yeah, 2.3 rings. So there's two, two and a half, three. Let's get a hole in one right here. Hitting it perfect. Get in the hole. That's got a look. It's got the look. Woo! That's what I'm talking about right there. Knocking it out. Now if we can just get the Albi on this last hole. So we got a great Albi tiebreaker. And that will be what we're looking for. And that'll put me at 30. And I really think in order to be towards the top, you're going to have to shoot a 30. Like a 30 puts you in, in the conversation. But I think anything less than a 30 in your... So I'm going to circle that plus 10 to the cup. 
plus 10 to the cup plus 10 1.2 yeah, so you can see right here, minus 29s at the top. And I think like as the week goes on, especially with new holes like this, it's just going to get tighter and tighter. And so if you want to have any conversation about it, you're going to have to And with the way that the tiebreakers are right now. Let's see what their tiebreaker is. They got a minus 14. I shot a 13 in the opener. So it's the these tiebreakers are super, super important. I thought a 13, I qualified on Monday. I just went ahead and, and pulled the trigger and qualified on Monday with the 13. Knowing that as the week went on, it was probably gonna take a 14, but trying to be up there at least in the upper group with tiebreakers. But I think coming into the weekend round, you're gonna have to have a good tiebreaker because it's just gonna get tight up there with anybody who shoots a, a 28 or better. So we have the opportunity right here. They've got me with the tiebreaker. And they've got an Albi on hole number 12. So if I get an Albi right here, that'll put me in the, the clear lead, at least in the opening round, and give me the Albi tiebreaker. And it's going to be important to have. The, any tiebreaker advantage you can get is going to be important. So let's see which way the wind's blowing. Let's see which way the wind is blowing. And we got headwind. So I'm going to bring a power four ball. Let's think about my options. If you bring a big enough ball, I think you can hit this with your big topper and you can get up there. But it seemed like yesterday I got pretty good distance. I think I hit with my, I'm not sure if I hit with my big topper yesterday or my ape. Or I think I did hit with my big topper, but it felt like I got further up in there with my I'm looking for the 415 to 418 range. So let's think about what do I have three of? It doesn't really help me with the wind, but it does give me the extra, extra oomph. And I do have three of those, so I could use that each round. That's not really helping me on the shot to the hole. The fireworks a little better. I'm going to get rid of these prestige balls. Do I want to do that? I'm going to get rid of those prestige balls. Nah, I'm not sure I want to do that. Sometimes you want to use a power four ball and you need a something that's got higher wind, like the one wind, because it kind of gives you more of the effect of a power five, but a power five is too much. A little bit of top spin boost, a little bit of wind. I got five of those. That's a whole tournament's worth, so I don't know if I want to burn that. Let's think strongly here. I could use Kingmaker X's. I do have enough of them to get me through. Now at least gives me the three wind. So I'll think about I could use could use that right there. Mmm, decisions, decisions. Start off with a regular Kingmaker and see what it does. And I'm gonna take either that bag or that bag. Let's take the extra mile to start off with since we're going against headwind. Let's open up a chest. Get some more, clear out a slot. Off we roll. All right. Now, in practice, when I first started and I came out here, the very first time I played this hole, I shot just straight up wind adjustments and was off. I kind of over pulled it so that I, I looked at the topography on the course and it, you're going downhill on the drive and you're going uphill to the cup. And so I came back, I played it again, I shot the same shot and then I took off 10% on the shot to the cup and sunk it, Alvi. But ever since then, I've been taking off the 10 and it's like I've been under pulling it. So I'm going to go back to just a straight up wind adjustment to the cup. And see what it does. Because I've been super close 
I've hit a bunch of perfects on this, but I've only made that one Albi. And that is not good. That was good, but that ain't good. I think it's going to end up right there in big, 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 big trouble. Okay, with the Kingmaker and that wind, it is laying me down. So I'm going to switch. I think with a big topper. It is laying me down, but I think with the big topper, with all of the topspin, if I run all the topspin out, hey, get off of there. I can get over. I'm going to put some curl on it to bring it back around to the fairway. Get myself a little bit of separation here. Hit it one, maybe two rings great to the right. Clipped it. Man, that wind laid it down. And that is the other thing I noticed here is that the wind is affects the ball more than what it's what it's showing. I still have a great shot going to the cup from there, but I'm not gonna be in my long iron range, I'm gonna be in wood range. So I'm gonna just take a straight up shot with my sniper. Whatever the wind is, that's how much I'm gonna adjust it. Let's get the Albi right here and get the clear lead. Give me a 30 tiebreaker going into the weekend round with an Albi. That's what we need. That's what I need. Where's my red line? Got plenty of room on the red line. Max Club. Went just a little bit. I want to go through the cut, but I don't want to go quite that far through the cut. Two five. Two five. Now let's hit it perfect. Hitting it perfect. Get in the hole. It's got a look. It's got the look just a bit off. And see the way the wind is blowing there? I'm going to have to, let's think about the way the wind is blowing. Did I over pull it? I over pulled it there. And I've been, like I said, I was taking off the 10% and I made it. And then I did that the rest of the week and I've been off like I over pulled it. Or like I under pulled it. I'll have to go back and look at the, the way the wind was blowing there. I I ended up the wind. I ended up on the right hand side, so I didn't pull it enough. I didn't pull it enough. The way the wind is blowing, it's like I should have added on wind. And maybe with maybe it's the difference between hitting it with my long iron and hitting it with my wood. Chasing the wind around. Arr. That might be the only reason I ever buy one of those golf passes, just so I can get the arg emoji. All right, so ended up with a 29 in the opening round. That's not what I was looking for. I'm looking for a 30. Didn't get it done on the front, only shooting a 13. So... I did pick it up on the back and shot a 16 on the back, but uh, just a little shy of where I would like to be. Because I really do believe in the weekend round that if you shoot a 30, you're in you're in the conversation for if if you know at least a banner. So not a bad back nine. Um, did pick up a lot of shots that I didn't get on the front. But still have a little bit of work to do to get consistent. I think the keys 
the key holes are are these two par fours for sure. This par four, um, this par four, these are key holes. I think the par threes are all makeable. The first par three, hole number two, I do think that, that there is a rough bump there and I you you will have a better shot. I'm having a little bit of difficulty. I think the deal is, is it's just one of those holes that the way it bleeds out. Maybe I could get closer to the hole and and not have so much run so that the course isn't affecting the ball so much. That might, that's another way to go at it. I like all three of my all three of the par fives. I think our chances of getting an Albion on all three of the par fives is very high. And the last par four, I still don't like where I'm ending up and the the way that I'm having to come at it. So this hole right here, I'm still, in my mind, I'm still working on this hole. I'm still practicing this hole. But the rest of the holes. Um, I really like our chances, and I've been super close on hole number seven, but I, I haven't made it yet this week. All right, that was the uh, opening round of the 2021 Summer Major, shooting a minus 29. That should give me a pretty good tiebreaker going into the weekend round. Let's see how many people here have finished the round. So to get to 50, we're at 22. Minimum score on this course is 24. I mean, there's no gimmies here. Although I think that there's some really low hanging fruit. And so this is what you see a lot with brand new courses, especially because we're not getting to practice like, you know, because it's not in tour play. We still have quite a few people down here that haven't played, but like looking at the scores that are here, um, it looks like we're definitely, could definitely get some 22 scoring, but 23s are, definitely going to make it in and i really think the minimum score that we were looking for is tw is 24. i mean you've got to shoot that minimum score so i think we have some pretty good opportunities this week to uh to banner if we can stay on track all right thanks for watching have a great weekend and uh hopefully everybody does great in the tournament